Elusia has sent me the Sculptor 500 preamps for a review. However, they gave me one challenge, and that is that I can't use them as a preamp, as I'm doing right now. So let's... Uh The reason why you haven't seen any preamp reviews on my channel is because reviewing preamps is super difficult. First of all, the differences between good preamps are very small and you probably won't hear them through the YouTube codec. The second issue is if you want to do it correctly, you want to do it through the same microphone. So you either need to split the signals and tamper with the impedances or capture the same performance two times, which is Kind of impossible considering we're all human beings. So reviewing a preamp as a preamp is very difficult. However, what I'm going to do with the Sculptor is reviewing the preamp as a coloring device because most of the controls on here are actually for coloring the signal. There's just one control for preamping. And in theory, it's wrong to use a preamp in a line signal path. But I have seen a lot of things that are wrong in theory. I've seen mastering engineers using telephone transformers in their mastering path. I've seen reverbs on master buses. I've seen a lot of stuff. And I think that what is important is not what works in theory, but what works and sounds good in practice. So let's take a closer look at these. So if we look at the preamps up close, there's a gain knob on here, which we can push as well to change the display here. So now we're looking at the amount of gain that it is generating. And now it's just a simple level meter. As you can see there, the next three knobs is where it gets interesting, at least for this purpose. Um, we've got shaping, we've got a high pass filter, and we've got some compression going on in here. So let's play a little bit with that. I've got a track here from the famous Darud. Uh, the track name is Sandstorm. So what I want to do is keep the preamp level as low as possible since we're already pretty loud. There might be a little bit of value in, in adding some preamping, but um, I'm going to need some padding as well then. So uh, let's not do that now. Um, let's push up the shape and let's overdo it a little bit. You can really hear it's adding some grit to the track. And what I've noticed that I'm using this for is basically uh, on tracks um, that are already very bright, that might need a little bit of brightness taming and on individual instruments for instance on percussion and stuff however it gets really interesting when we turn it down and switch to shape 2 because shape 2 is the opposite of shape 1 <laughs> uh, if you ask me it's not it's not necessarily the opposite but this really creates some brightness some excitement Let's overdo it. It's some crushy, but also some freshness. But this is what it sounds bypassed. And this is what it sounds with the shape two. Again, shape one. And this is what it sounds bypassed. So really some extra color. Now what is on here as well is a high pass filter, which is a 12 decibel per octave high pass filter. And of course, Illusia class uh, design. There's nothing wrong with having a high pass filter on the master bus. Definitely not when you want to filter out the rumble and stuff. There's not a lot of that in this track. And of course, there's a little compressor in here as well, which is... Um, Basically on fixed settings, it's a 3 to 1 ratio. And I really like this one when it's just, just touching it. Like that. So let's bypass it. Enable it. Now overdo it. And now you can hear that it's a pretty aggressive compressor, so you don't want to do too much of this on your master bus. Hello? Sounds really cool. 
Now let's add a little bit of that shape to it. Like that. And there you go. Mastering with a preamp. Now again, these are preamps, so uh, one thing it doesn't do is linking the left and the right uh, compression. But honestly, about half of the times that I'm using compression on the master bus, I actually choose to unlink the compression. It depends on the type of compression, the type of song and that kind of stuff. But it isn't, for me, it isn't a fixed rule to always have linked compression on a master bus. It does, however, becomes a problem when there is like, I would say Beatles-like stereo content, where you really have a left, mid and right uh, mix and uh, if you're not stereo linked and there's a loud sound on for instance the left channel then you're basically changing the balance of what is happening in the center of your stereo image so so that's one thing uh, another thing to be aware of is that these because they are preamps uh, can deliver phantom power and it shouldn't be a problem when enabling phantom power on balanced signals uh, towards your AD converter. However, if there's something wrong in your cabling or whatever, you can really destroy the stage that is prior to sculptors. In my case, this time it's, it's my DA converters. So be aware of that. Um, you have to hold those buttons. So that's very well done. There's also a face reverse knob on here, which is great for preamping. But of course, if, you, if you're going to need that on your master bus, then there's something else wrong. And uh, you can mute the signal instead of bypassing it, which is, of course, you know, again, it's a preamp. Uh, it would be nice maybe if Illusia would make some kind of option on here, like, I don't know, holding it to bypass whatever. I don't know. Could be one for the for the for the next generation of these. Also, it has a high impedance, high headroom, balanced DI input at the front, um, and these ones are really made to uh, plug instruments into. When using it in the application that I am doing it, it was advised by Ruben, the designer of these, um, to use the mic inputs. And one thing he said about the mic inputs is that they had a higher impedance than other mic inputs which basically means that you're getting more level out of your microphone if you're using these as a preamp. I've been testing these for about a month now and I really enjoyed using these on my master bus so that's why I'm constantly talking about the master bus but there are way more applications for this. I don't know yet if I'm going to buy these but that's basically because I've got other priorities at the moment so um, um, yeah. That's it. The Sculptor 500 sells for 750 euros or 900 dollars, depending on where you're at, and that's per channel. Now, considering the build quality of these, which is super high for Illusia gear, and the fact that you can basically use them two times as a preamp or as a coloring device, I think the price is right on the spot. And if you're interested in buying them, I'll put some affiliate links in the description down below. Now, also don't forget to join the channel as a channel member. Links are down below. And also, don't forget to check out these videos. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep pushing. And bye-bye.